Good morning, everybody, or at least morning over here. That's when this is getting filmed. Today, we're going to talk about how to orient your bed in a few different room orientation types, style types, where doors are, windows are. So get excited. My name's Jeanette Zizikowski, your go-to feng shui consultant. Let's get into it. The first room here, we're going to start with the most basic, basic, basic room. I don't even know if a room exists that is this basic, but it's because I want to point out to you the feng shui principle that we use when we are considering how to place a bed in a bedroom. We always look at where the door is first and foremost. We think of this a few different ways. Think of it, we call it the power position or the command position in feng shui. And that means that you are facing the door, that you can see, or at least you can see the door and you can see the people entering into the door. Think of a king or a queen sitting on their throne. They never have their back to the door, right, where enemies would come in and come up and sneak up behind them. We don't want any of that. Subconsciously, our subconscious, even if we don't feel it, if we are not facing the door, there's 2% of us, there's a very small percentage of us that is still always in that protection mode, safety mode, awareness mode and it drains your energy and so we don't need that while you're sleeping so here we are we have our square room we have our door let's take our bed and just start over here so some options for people would they would they would place their bed here next to the door not ideal to share your head with the door we want to be facing the door we have the other option to come this way not great either because sure you can kind of see the door for our second option this is not ideal because of where the bed is placed in the path of entry let's say doors and windows in feng shui allow for energy to move and transition it's where people enter and they carry in energy and it's where the energy that we can't see comes in as well picture energy is a large bucket of water and when you pour in that large bucket of water, where does all that bucket of water energy rush into? It comes straight here to the bed. So we don't want that because we're trying to relax and recharge and we don't need a big bucket rush of energy coming to us. Let's look at another option. Believe it or not, I have seen this before. This. I don't know what this person was thinking. The pillows would fall off the back. There's nothing strong and solid supporting the headboard. It was also an odd arrangement because there was two people. You want to have space for each person. Even if the second person is theoretical and doesn't exist and there's just one of you, you want there to be space around the whole bed for energy to recharge below around on the sides that's also why i always talk in my videos about not having any clutter under the bed because we want energy to fully encompass you and restore you the yin energy of the room so this also makes no sense not only is the energy coming straight in through the door you are also not facing the door you're also not supported by a strong wall headboard anything another option sometimes people maximize the room by putting it at an angle and technically this is the command position you can see the door and water would disperse throughout or that energy would disperse throughout evenly but feng shui doesn't like these awkward corners this creates some of trapped chi stale chi especially when we later look at what energy is coming in from this direction, say this direction was the west, what energy is coming in from the west, what energy is being trapped here, and then dust collects, no movement collects, it's the same as like behind mirrors, when you have leaning mirrors, there's just a lot of trapped stale energy that gets stuck back there, and so we don't love that. So what is the best option for this room? The best option would be here. We can see the door. We have a strong wall supporting the back of us. We also have space on either side for each person to enter the bed. And we have space to balance out the bed with two end tables. All while seeing the command position. So this is the ideal position for this style bedroom. Let's move on to, I have a floor plan here. This room's a little different. Here we have curved 
wall and we have windows and a closet door. You can guess from everything that we just talked about where the best spot is, but let's just look. Again, certainly not here because the energy, that wa figurative water, the people all carry in energy through the door. We can't directly see the door. Here, if your bed was small enough, some people might like this, but if you can avoid it, you wanna avoid having your head at a window. Again, a lot of energy coming in and out. You want to avoid sleeping with your head at a window. Also a safe guess that we wouldn't share the closet wall, right? This is too tight of a squeeze. Having doors right here, having to people enter here, the, that closet, we don't want any of that. So safe guess here to put the bed along this wall. If you cannot center your bed, if your room is small enough to where you have to put it against a wall, that's okay. It's not the end of the world. There's no such thing as perfect feng shui. We have to work with what we have. So there's a bit of a hierarchy in terms of what rules do we follow. Always do your best to see the door. Be in that command position. Second, avoid head at windows. Third to try and hit is always having it centered so that there's energy coming around both sides, leaving room for end tables or at least space for figurative end tables. That's the ideal. So against the wall, I'd say comes third. So a couple other things to consider when you're thinking about your bed placement. Think about what is at the back of your head. In feng shui, they like having you on a solid wall. If you're on a solid wall that is the outside of the wall, that's also great, particularly great. Now. In this case, the bathroom is here, but if you are arranging a bed and maybe you have one of those Jack and Jill bedrooms and the bathroom is along one of the walls, let's say it's right here, you don't want to share your head with a toilet that is figuratively draining energy and messes with the energy as you're sleeping. So feng shui principles say, do not place your bed on the same shared wall as the toilet. Second, this one can maybe be tough. Avoid working from your room. So there's no need to place a desk in here. If you want to place a desk, if it's an absolute must, then you also technically wanna try and see the door. Being a command position always is ideal, but tucking it away on the sides, you don't want it to be too close. As much separation from work and sleep, one is a very active thing, working, one is a very passive thing, sleeping. And so we don't like to mix the two in one bedroom. We want to keep yang in a room. We want to keep yin in its own room. So if you can, avoid working from your room. Avoid worrying about a desk in here. Comment below what your challenges are with your room. If you have a particularly small room, tricky room, I would love if you DM'd me pictures or even just describing it or a quick sketch and then I would love to address that room in a video for you. Okay, there's a few more things I wanna address. Beams in the bedroom. If this, if we're back to our simple basic bedroom here and you have a beam splitting down the center of the bed or, or splitting down the center of the room or you have a beam maybe this way and your bed was here you want to avoid this avoid this avoid this avoid this beams are very heavy and splitting energy wood cutting energy so when we see this arrangement we often feel or see a separation between the two people sharing the bed they can feel very pressed down, heavy and tired and weighed down on when they're sleeping and they can feel very divided. If you have a beam in your bedroom, this beam is this blue, <laughs> this blue bar is the representation of the beam, then can you create a canopy bed? Can you hang artistically or nicely, subtly some drapery? Can you paint the beam the same color as the ceiling so at least aesthetically visually which does get translated to your subconscious that beam disappears and blends in with the ceiling at least those are some options but we want to avoid this you can this is a case where you would do your best to tuck in 
the bed to the side and avoid it so at least it's not directly over the center of your bed. The last scenario I want to point out is this really silly thing I'm going to call a ceiling fan. If you have the luxury of an option to avoid having a ceiling fan right above your bed, that's great. Ceiling fans are tricky in feng shui. They stir up energy and they can create pain or discomfort over the areas that they're over. So in this case, it'd be ankles. This case, it'd be stomach. In this case, it'd be head, right? So if you can place your bed somewhere where you're not directly under a fan, that's great. If you are in an apartment unit such as this one, you know, fans come pretty standard right over the center. They just expect it. They place it right in the center of the bedroom. Then avoid using that ceiling fan. And just instead, choose a floor fan. Or also, if this is your home and you have the luxury of knowing a contractor, have him move it out. If you're building your home, if you are designing your own home, if you're that advanced, then think about where the ceiling fans are before and where you're going to be placing your bed, figure out proportions, and just make sure that the ceiling fan isn't directly over the head and ideally not over the bed. That's all today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like this video if you liked it. If you now have found your bed arrangement, subscribe and follow along as I share these feng shui and mindset tips to help you transform a life you tolerate into one you treasure.